In this video, we're going to learn how to publish your Adobe Captivate project as a Windows app or a Mac app. Okay, let's get started here. So, um, this has been um, something that I thought about uh, primarily because, of course, I had uh, a video that teaches you how to publish for a learning management system, but there are occasions where you might use Adobe Captivate to create a Windows executable file or a Mac or Apple Macintosh uh, application as well. And so I'll just take you through that. A lot of people miss this, but it is something that is available to you. And there could be various reasons that you want to do it. You might want to distribute your e-learning uh, instead of on a learning management system or instead of over the internet through uh, a web page. Uh, you might want to distribute it on CD-ROM or perhaps with a USB key. Um, this way, of course, it keeps the, uh, you know, the application from uh, being accessed on the internet perhaps. And, um, you know, it gives you uh, another option, a different way to distribute your, your online course. Um, so let's get started. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to click the Publish drop-down icon here and select Publish to Computer. You might think Publish for Devices, but that's really for mobile devices like Android and iOS stuff. Uh, but let's go to Publish to Computer. And you'll see, you know, whatever the whatever the last default publishing settings you probably used for this particular course. In this case, um, most people nowadays are using HTML5, uh, SWF, which is a combination of Flash and a little bit more modern HTML work. Um, we're going to change that drop down. Uh, you also have the option to simply publish your course as a video. Uh, but in this case, we're looking for executable. So we're going to select that, and you'll see that it changes the publish to my computer window uh, a little bit here. The first option and the first decision that you need to make is whether you're publishing for a Windows executable uh, or you're publishing for a Mac executable. So either a .exe for Windows or a .app for Mac. Now, in this case, I'm going to choose uh, Windows Executable because that's what I'm using. But certainly, this is available. Even if you're running a Windows machine, you can publish to the Mac and distribute it to all your Mac users as well. Uh, the first thing you need to uh, select here, once you've made your selection here, or the second thing, if you will, uh, is your project title. So just give it a name, you know, Project 1 for example. Um, I've already changed the default location. The default location is, is usually wherever you normally publish your courses to. Uh, the default with Adobe Captivate is under your My Documents folder in a folder uh, usually called My Adobe Captivate Projects. Uh, but I like to publish to the desktop because of course it's easier to find and so I've already gone ahead and put this on my desktop. Um, you can choose an icon file. Um, what you're looking for is a file with the extension .ico. Uh, if you're ex an expert at making .ico files, which are basically bitmap files that become your icon for the executable, um, you know, I encourage you to try this out. I haven't had a lot of luck with this working very well. Uh, maybe I'm just not talented at making icons, so I usually just go with the default. The default looks very much like an Adobe Captivate logo. You can choose to zip these files once you're completed uh, publishing, um, but really it's not necessary to do that. You can choose full screen, so if you want the app to run full screen rather than in a windowed situation, uh, you certainly can make that choice as well. Um, Force republish on all slides. I find that this is more useful when you're publishing a, a much larger course. Uh, let's say you make a, a, you've got a 150 slide course and you make a small change to slide number 50. Uh, there's no sense republishing the other 149 slides uh, from the existing course. So this is more applicable to I would say HTML. Um, but, you know, I always just leave it checked off anyway. That way I can ensure that 
I'm getting a nice clean publish every time I do it. You have the choice of choosing your flash player. Um, usually I think the smartest approach is to go with the earliest version of flash just to ensure that you're maintaining compatibility with older browsers and older computers. Um, we can also choose to generate auto run files for a CD. So you know when you purchase uh, software, sometimes when you insert the CD-ROM, I know this sounds very old school, but if you insert the CD-ROM, it will recognize that there's something to run on there. Those are the auto run files. So you can choose to have Captivate generate those in addition to your EXE file. Um, they're even applicable if you were putting this on a USB thumb drive. So you could put those auto runs there and you know Windows will ask you what would you like to do? Would you like to go ahead and run this application? Um, the other options here, scalable HTML content. So this would allow you to resize the window and uh, it will scale up or scale down accordingly. Uh, I usually leave this unchecked because I find that when you scale up, especially uh, a course where it might only be 800 by 600 resolution, if you scale it up to you know, 1024 by 768, everything gets kind of um, pixely. So uh, I recommend leaving that off. Seamless tabbing is a feature available in IE or Internet Explorer. Uh, it has to do with, uh, you know, if you're going to assign the tab function uh, to a particular aspect of your course, usually it would be navigation. Uh, seamless tabbing, of course, uh, allows you to do that. Um, in other browsers, of course, tabbing won't necessarily work because the browser has its own tab functionality. Let's click the More button just to see what's down there. Uh, you have just really more information when you're publishing to an executable. Uh, number of slides, resolution of this particular project, slides with audio. Uh, also, there's some custom audio settings which would allow you to change the bit rate, uh, but really there's not much for you to do here. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. Let's go ahead and publish. This shouldn't take very long. It's a single slide project, of course. And this will, of course, create an exe file that will be located directly on my desktop. I'll just minimize Adobe Captivate for a moment and show this to you. So I have this file here. It's called Audio Workaround, is pretty much is what you'd expect. And you can double click it in Windows to run. And you can see here, there's my project. It's just a very simple project. It doesn't do very much. But um, the result is, of course, that this will pretty much run on almost any Windows machine. Uh, certainly Windows uh, 10, Windows uh, 8, 8.1, Windows 7, Vista, XP, uh, certainly anything in the last 10 or 15 years or so. So, uh, But the nice thing is, is basically you've got this nice contained window. You don't have to worry about whether um, you know certain software is installed, certain browsers are installed. Um, that's the real advantage of this, and of course you can then, of course, burn it to CD-ROM or put it on that USB key and distribute it however you wish. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was fun, interesting, useful, educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.